Chester County, Pennsylvania's most affluent county and home to the mushroom capital of the world, Kennett Square. Here, the mushroom industry produces 47% of the national output and employs 10,000 workers, most of whom are Hispanic immigrants. Since the 1900s, the mushroom industry has dominated the region, a condition that continues today. My name is Timothy Hine. I'm a fourth generation owner of C.P. Yetman and Sons. We've been growing mushrooms since 1919. Uh, my name is Megan Klotzbach. I'm a fifth generation family member here at C.P. Yetman and Sons. My name is Javier Lopez. Uh, I have been here in the U.S. for about 12 years now. It has since become a, a family operation. Grandfathers, fathers, children, grandchildren, all in the, in the buildings at the same time. In 1973, the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights investigated labor conditions on the mushroom farms. They found conditions bordering on the inhumane with deplorable and cramped living conditions, chronic respiratory diseases, and low wedges. By the 1990s, these workers described labor camps paid hourly wedges that had only increased from 425 to 725 per hour. Well, labor is a very, very intensive part of our business. Always been an immigrant workforce. It's just what immigrant was the workforce at which time. We've gone from, from a cycle of one to another. You know, the original was Italians, and then it moved to the mountain men, the southerners, and then we had the Puerto Ricans come in, and then we had the Mexicans come in. The Italian came over, worked very hard to make a living for their family. The Italians were like, okay, now we're, we're going to own the businesses. So then we had to find a new group of immigrants. Our Mexican workforce, we have many um, Mexicans who own their own businesses in mushrooms now. Just within our farm, we've gone from roughly two million in labor a year to over seven million dollars in labor per year. As agricultural workers have gained more visibility in the public sphere, the mushroom industry has responded by providing increased safety measures. Uh, one of the things that you can see over here is some of the cross pieces that we have next to the beds. This is so that the employees can stand better and more comfortably and can pick the mushrooms without a risk of them falling. We also have the handle here next to the stairs so that they can grab from here in case they're going up or down. In fact, some people have fallen in before in other areas. So this is a lot safer for employees. In addition to increased safety measures, Many mushroom farms also seek to create a sense of community and improve the well-being of their employees. We offer housing for some of them. We try to point them in the right direction. Last year, we had a company picnic, Health Fair. In the last 20 years, there has been an increase in nonprofit organizations supporting the mushroom farm worker community. We went over different things of how to stay healthy, keeping up with your visits to a doctor. A lot of the farms won't let people go during the day, even for serious health issues. We had a man who wasn't allowed to see his wife giving birth. Have there been any efforts to you know, unionize? The answer is no, but their their not employees fought with lawyers to get out of this union because right. these companies treat them better without them. <laughs> yeah. We're not <laughs> yeah. A lot of employees that have been here for 30, 35 years, mm -hmm. so that shows that the company is treating them well. The ones who work in the mushroom farms, they're not great paying jobs, so they tend to live in low-cost apartments or sometimes trailers. The workers for 30 years get, you know, three, four extra days paid vacation. Both the political discourse on immigration and foreign market competition provide significant challenges to the mushroom industry. We're at a point right now where, where there is a fear of what's going to happen. That's stopping us from wanting to expand and, and continually increase the impact we have on the economy because we're not sure if we're going to have a labor force. The farms and local nonprofits engage in partnerships to support the farm workers. They are paying their taxes and they are putting, they are putting money back into the U.S. economy. We need to work towards getting those people um, eligible to work here. Um, we have worked with the mushroom farms for many years because they have mixed motivations. They want their employees to be healthy, but they don't want to give them any time off from work. We also help them get their GED certificate. We help them learn English. We help them get their citizenship. And by the time they've done all that, they can go get a better job now. They can move up to supervisor or manager at a mushroom farm, or they can just leave that whole field and go get a job someplace else. A tension is created between the efforts of the nonprofits and the business realities of the farms, which is further complicated by the farm's financial supports of the nonprofits. We want to start this new marketing campaign to teach the elementary age students how to grow mushrooms, get them excited about them at a young age. Uh, we also want to work with the high school age students to get them to understand that there's a huge job opportunity 
uh, here within our, our area. They don't have to move away to find a job. They don't have to go to, to college to find a job. The mushroom festival was started and it is supported by the farms themselves with proceeds supporting local nonprofits. Four, three, two, one, happy new year!